What's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to be talking about Diona, one of the staple four-star characters in both my Abyss and Overworld teams. With Diona being given away for free during patch 1.5 and appearing on Zhongli's banner, most of the community should have at least one copy of this amazing support character by now. Not only does this character provide the second strongest shield in the game, she also heals very effectively, is a great battery character, and can provide huge damage buffs to your team with the Noblesse set and her Constellation 6. Since my last Diona video, the game has fully entered into a shield meta, and it really feels like MiHoYo is trying to sell Zhongli in as many ways as possible possible. While Diona doesn't fully compete with Zhongli in the shield department, her shield is still very strong and she has many other useful things built into her kit. I was recently able to get her Constellation 6, making her easily one of my most valuable support characters. Because of this, I've been trying to figure out what my endgame Diona build looks like and if I should continue to invest in this character. I have tested Diona's healing potential with the Maiden's Beloved and Noblesse Oblige artifact sets at plus 12, plus 16, and plus 20, and have done a ton of math to calculate the additional healing and shield shield strength that she gains with talent level and character level upgrades. The new tenacity of the Millilis set has also dropped in patch 1.5, and while the 4-piece set cannot effectively be equipped on Diona, this set can be equipped on other support characters to provide a fairly significant shield strength increase for Diona's shield, which I will demonstrate in this video as well. In this video, we're going to go over all of the testing and math that I've done so that you can really understand how much Diona gains with investment. This is basically a resource management game after all, or we would max all of our characters with that regard. Also compare her potential as a battery for your team using her two best in slot four star bows, the Favonius Warbow and Sacrificial Bow, and show the actual difference in their potential. To start this off, let's briefly discuss Diona's kit. Diona has a regular bow user's normal and charge attack talent, with charge attack dealing cryo damage. The ratios are okay, but in order to do damage, you need to build attack percent, which takes away from Diona's other talents, so I do not recommend this. Diona's elemental skill and burst should be the focus of her kit. Her elemental skill fires either two or five icy paws depending on if the skill is pressed or held, and it generates a shield. The hold skill will also generate additional energy particles. Her shield duration is also extended from 4.8 seconds if it is pressed to 12 seconds if it is held, and it will absorb 75% more damage. The strength of this shield is calculated based on her max HP as well as the talent level, and because her damage potential is small, it is best to fully invest in HP and energy recharge for Diona. Her first passive talent also increases attack speed and decreases stamina consumption of shielded characters by 10%, while her second constellation increases shield damage absorption and gives your teammates a shield in co-op. Diona's burst applies crowd damage on cast and every two seconds throughout its 12 second duration. Her burst also provides healing that scales on her max HP and comes with an energy cost of 80. However, this is reduced to 65 when you get constellation one. Her first passive talent also decreases enemy attack by 10% for 15 seconds while they're in her burst radius, while her sixth constellation, which is by far her strongest, increases everyone's healing by 30% while they're below 50% HP, and increases elemental mastery of the party by 200 once they're above 50% HP for 15 seconds. This makes her extremely useful in elemental comps for big one-shot damage numbers. For reference, 200 elemental mastery equates to about a 30% increase in melt and vaporize damage. I don't think any of her constellations are necessary, but in my opinion, Constellation 1 greatly helps with energy issues and makes her a much more viable character, while Constellation 6 is just an amazing damage bonus for your team. Okay, so the point of this whole video is to determine how Diona's level of investment affects her healing and shielding potential. For these tests, I mostly compared what I think are the two most viable artifact sets on her, which are the 4-piece Maiden set and 4-piece Noblesse set. There is one other set that I would consider running on her, which is a mixed set consisting of two-piece Maidens and two-piece Tenacity of the Millilith, which will give some increased shield strength at the loss of some healing over running a four-piece Maidens. I know people also like to run a four-piece Instructor set for the elemental mastery increase for the team, but I personally do not think it is worth running this over a four-piece Noblesse because this is a four-star set that will decrease shielding and healing and is more niche than the 20% attack buff that Noblesse provides. For the initial test comparing the Maidens and Noblesse sets at different artifact levels, I'm using Diona at level 70 out of 70 with level 9 skill and burst talents and HP% percent main stats on her Sands, Goblet, and Circlet. If you're having energy recharge issues, you can run an ER Sands, however just note that an ideal build will get ER from substats and weapons alone. 
I currently have 171% energy recharge, and with a sacrificial bow, I can typically get my burst up on cooldown. However, if you're running a Favonius bow, I would aim for an energy recharge closer to 200%. Okay, with all artifacts at level 12, the Maiden set gives 3,600 healing per tick, or 21,000 total, versus 2,700 per tick, and 16,000 total for the Noblesse set. Going up to level 16 artifact sets, the total Maiden's healing increases by 2,000 to 23,000 total, while the Noblesse healing increases by 1,500 to 18,000 total. I didn't level up my Maiden set all the way to 20 because of resources, but did take my Noblesse set to level 20, which gave a healing of 3,000 per tick, or about 19,500 total. So the Maiden set at level 12 provides about 2,000 more total healing than a Noblesse set at level 20. However, they are close, and 19,000 total healing is enough to heal most of the characters in the game to full health. I am also not considering Diona's C6 talent here, which will increase her healing even further by providing an extra 30% healing when the character is below 50% HP. So as a strict healer, I think Diona can get away with about 18,000 max HP for a Maiden set, but because shields are so important, we may want to increase her HP beyond this to get a stronger shield, which we'll talk about now. Diona's shield strength also scales off her max HP, and there's not an artifact set that we can equip on her that will increase her shield strength when switching characters, since the two-piece Bolide set does not transfer. However, if we equip the four-piece Tenacity of the Millilis set on a support such as Fischl, who can keep this set active 100% of the time, we can get an increase in shield strength of 30%, which I will test here. Testing was done against the Pyro Regisfine, who starts off the fight with a series of Pyro homing missiles that hit for about 1k each. I tested Diona's shield strength at three different max HP values, which correspond approximately to the max HP that would be achieved with Diona at level 70, with plus 12, plus 16, and plus 20 artifact sets running HP main stats on all pieces but the feather. With a max HP of 18,000, Diona's shield absorbed damage from six missiles and broke on the seventh. The total damage absorbed was 7,319. This damage absorption increased to 8,036 with a max HP of about 21,000 and to 8,880 with a max HP of about 25,000. Overall, this was an increased damage absorption of 1,500 HP, which is about a 20% increase in shield strength. When we equip Fischl with the four-piece Tenacity of the Millilis set, the shield absorbed 11,544 total damage, which is 30% higher than when this buff is not applied, and a 57% increase from the plus 12 artifact set tested. The increased damage absorption achieved by upgrading artifacts is significant and is worth it in my opinion because they also benefit her healing. So you may be wondering how a two-piece Maidens with two-piece Tenacity of the Millilis set compares to a full Maidens. With my current level of investment of 24,000 HP with level 9 talents, we get a shield with 632 more damage absorption, but we lose out on about 2,000 total healing. This damage absorption bonus is pretty minimal, and if you're already running a four-piece Maidens, I would stick with that, but this mixed two-piece set performs well if you're just farming for artifacts now or have better pieces in one set than the other. The last two things I want to touch on are talent levels and character level. As I mentioned, I recently got C6, and I have three extra levels on my shield talent, bringing it to nine. However, before this, I was feeling like I may want to increase this talent level further. Of course, going over talent level 6 without constellations requires ascending past level 70, RNG gated boss drops, and significantly increased mora and resin costs. So let's see how Diana's shield strength scales with talent level using my current max HP of 24,000. For these calculations, I did use the hold skill bonus of 75% shield strength as well as the constellation 2 shield strength increase of 15%. At talent level 1, we get 4,678 damage absorption. This increases to 6,790 at level 6. 8,391 at level 9, and 9,850 at level 12. Based on these numbers, I think that talent level 8 or 9 is a good place to stop for most people depending on constellation level. Level 9 is a 23% increase in shield strength from level 6, but I do not think it is worth it if you do not have C5, as level 9 talents are very costly and this requires multiple ascensions. If you do have C5 and want to invest in Diona, level 11 talents are not too costly and this is a 40% increase in shield strength over talent level 6. 
This has become my personal goal as I can ascend Diona to level 70 out of 80 and keep her there to achieve this talent level. However, as a cheaper support, I believe her shield is very strong at talent level 9. So if you do not have C5 Diona, I do think it is worth ascending to level 70 out of 80 for the increase in base HP and the ability to upgrade talents to level 8. Using my artifacts and a talent level 9 shield, Diona's shield absorption only increases by about 1000 going from level 70 out of 70 to level 80 out of 90. I do not recommend leveling Diona to 90 as she really does not need this level of investment and I personally would only ascend past level 70 for the talent level upgrades as the increase in shield strength from additional HP is pretty small for the cost. Okay, let's briefly discuss her two best in slot four star weapons, the Favonius Warbow and Sacrificial Bow, and when to choose one over the other. The Favonius Warbow at refinement one has a 60% chance to generate six energy for the active character every 12 seconds. This increases to 100% every six seconds at refinement five. What this really means is that three non-elemental energy particles are generated when this passive is activated. Because these are non-elemental energy particles, whoever is on the field to collect these will receive six energy, while all off-field characters will receive 3.6 energy. Diona does have to be on the field for this passive to take effect, so even if it procs during her burst, if she's not on the field, energy won't be generated. The Sacrificial Bow at Refinement 1 has a 40% chance to end the skull cooldown every 32 seconds, which it increases to an 80% chance every six 16 seconds at R5. An additional elemental skill generates five cryo energy particles and strongly favors having cryo teammates. Looking realistically at the total energy generated by each weapon passive over the 15 second skill cooldown, for R5 weapons these are very similar, with a total energy of 25.2 for the Favonius Warbo and between 20 and 29 energy for the Sacrificial Bow depending on if other cryo units are on the team and whether Diana collects the particles. So the Sacrificial Bow can allow Diana to get her burst up much more frequently due to the additional elemental skill, makes Diona the best battery character for a cryo main DPS, increases shield uptime, and results in less downtime with Diona having to be on the field. The Favonius Bow has a higher total energy generation capability, especially if there's not another cryo unit on the team, but does require increased field time from Diona as well as some investment in crit rate for the weapon to be very effective. This is either reliant on getting good substats or running a crit rate circlet which takes away from her shielding and healing potential. I personally almost always run Diona with another cryo unit and would choose Sacrificial every time but it does come down to playstyle preferences. In summary, Diona really benefits most from talent and artifact upgrades. Talent level 8 on her skill is probably more than enough for most players, which means either level 70 out of 70 or 70 out of 80 depending on constellations. I think that her healing is sufficient even at talent level 6 and that she does not need much investment there. With modest talent levels and a plus 16 or plus 20 artifact set, Diona should serve your team very well. That's all I got for you guys today. If you guys found this video helpful and informative, please consider subscribing down below. I put out Genshin Impact videos just like this one every single week. I'll see you guys for the next video. Peace.